What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gums Podcast, episode number eight. We are making our return right now today. Sadly, I am by myself, and probably for the next couple of weeks, I will be by myself. But that's not going to stop me because today I got a lot of stuff to talk to you guys about. Let me pull up my notes and we'll get started. If I can, uh, you know, if I can, uh, you know, there we go. There we go, baby boy. Okay, so I'm wearing my glasses so I can read my notes on the computer. Kind of tough, but you know, it's whatever. So today, I, I really wanted to get into um, the Lion King discussion. There's been a lot of people debating fairly on the internet, and some stuff is just like not sitting well with me. Some people are telling me that it's live action, it's live action, and some people are telling me no, it's just flat out animation. And some people are saying that there needs to be a subgenre for this kind of style of animation. And I was in that boat. I was like, hey, this is a new style of animation. This is the first time. Of, this is the first of its kind. 100% animation, but that looks 100% real. I mean, with the Jungle Book, we had a live action character. We had Mowgli, so that was obviously a live action. But when it comes to this, there's no people in it. It's there's no sets. There's no nothing. So. That was live action. And now people are wondering, like, well, that was just one person. What's the difference with this? So I just wanted to have a discussion with you guys. And not just stuff with that. There's a couple other stuff I really would like to talk about. Uh, one being uh, that people are now saying that it's just going to be a shot-for-shot shot remake. I'll get into that later. But discussing with this whole animation deal and this whole live action deal, uh, I spoke to two of my buddies who are who actually well one of them went to college for animation and one of them loves to animate on his own free time and he studies a, he didn't go to college for animation but he, he took a couple classes on it um i asked him like hey would you make this a new genre of animation like there's 3d animation 2d animation stop motion animation there's different styles and genres of animation so i asked him what do you think he did have to think about it because yet again it's the first of its kind um, but he said no. Like, eventually he just came out and said no, it's just 3D animation. So, if this was to get nominated for an Oscar, it would be best animated film. It's as if it was like Toy Story, because Toy Story is 3D animation. It's just the fact this one looks more real. Some people, it doesn't sit well with them when I say that. Um, I was talking to one of my uh, Instagram followers. He said it, it needs to be titled Realistic Animation. He thinks that it needs to be that. To me, my biggest problem with that is the fact that realistic animation just does not sound like a Hollywood term. I mean, you got 2D animation, 3D animation, stop motion animation. Then you got realistic animation. The thing is, realistic is a term that most Hollywood people don't like to use. Because when you use the term realistic, that means The Lion King wouldn't be eligible for that. Because, yeah, it looks real. They got like They look like actual animals. But the thing is the way their mouths are going to move are going to be humanized and the, some of their facial expressions are going to be humanized so that is not realistic so on that term just realistic animation just the term of realistic is not good enough and it's very flat very flat so 3D animation is definitely what it's going to be officially called and because when you think about it like this i was watching one of the youtubers i'd like to watch all the time he basically said this Animation films are made on computers, and live-action films are made on sets. The Jungle Book, yes, heavily animated, but used on set. Avengers Infinity War, heavily an uh, heavily animated, but yet still shot on set. The Jungle Book, not Jungle Book, <laughs> my bad, the, the, the Lion King, the Lion King is being made on a computer. So, on that end alone, makes it an animated film, and it's not going to get its own subgenre. It's 3D animation, because it's three-dimensional just has a different texture to it i mean you, there's a lot of 3d animations out there but do they all look the same no you then you will be saying realistic 3d animation realist uh like bendy weird shapey animation so that on that end uh i'm just gonna say it's just gonna be 3d animation and yet again two guys who went to college for animation well one went to college for animation and one took a couple classes on animation their professional opinion, they eventually uh, came to an agreement, 3D animation, so that's what it is. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was that now people, there's not a lot, but there's still some people that are not interested because it looks like a shot-for-shot -shot remake. Now, 
I'm going to just say my professional opinion. Well, not professional opinion, just my opinion. It's not going to be a shot-for-shot remake. If you look at The Jungle Book, that could have been a shot-for-shot remake. But no, they had a lot of stuff from the actual animated movie, but they still had their own stuff. Like, I forget the name of the snake, Kai, or whatever the fuck her name is. Um, Well, in the cartoon, it was he, but in the movie, it was her. Um, In the cartoon... He had more lines. He had more things to do in the in the actual movie. Had one, maybe two lines of dialogue. So obviously things are going to change. Don't think this is going to be a shot for shot remake because it's made by the same guy. He knows what he's doing. People want to see, this. This teaser trailer was just there to get a lot of people hype, especially non movie fans. Because I was at Thanksgiving. Everyone was at Thanksgiving when this thing dropped. Just watching football. This thing drops. I I kid you not. I heard that song on loop for the past 25, 30 minutes when that trailer dropped because they were all excited. And these people watch a movie a year, maybe. And they were like, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see this because it, they showed you what was familiar. The next upcoming trailers are going to be something new. Like, I don't think the Coyotes are going to be the same style. I think they're going to be a little bit different, uh, but there's still going to be a lot of similar attributes to the cartoon, to the the to the live action movie and I'm just going to stop calling it live action but just for now I'm just going to call it live action with a parentheses 3D animated movie oh just to the 2D animation uh, to the 3D animation there we go um but yeah that's all I really have to say on that um so people who are worried about this whole oh it's going to be shot for shot remake calm down it's not going to be shot for shot remake I will put my house on it I will it's not going to be shot for shot remake now what's next on okay so um a couple uh, days ago, um, the Arrowverse crossover trailer has dropped. It's the no longer a teaser. It's actually a trailer. Um, and the Arrowverse is known for their big crossovers every year. And this this one I'm not exactly super hyped for, but I'm very intrigued about. Because we're going to have Batwoman. And it's only a three-episode crossover. It's going to have Supergirl, Flash, and Arrow in it. Um, but this trailer was... Pretty dope, I'm not going to lie, because we actually have black suit Superman in this. And I'm really excited to see that. And not only that, so we got we got Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, and then we got other versions of the Arrow and Flash. And then we got the OG TV show Flash. I'm not going to sit in here act like, oh, I watched it, I binged it, and I loved it. But I think that's just a cool little tease. Because I remember watching, like some clips of the original Flash because when I was a kid I didn't know anything about movies or anything like that I was like hey this Flash got his own movie and then I saw that I was like eh whatever didn't watch it but it's cool to see that connect and uh, with the whole multiple dimensions and shit like that the Elseworld stuff and I'm just really excited for that to see him the OG Flash and his OG suit there and he mentions that Black Suit Superman destroyed his Earth so there's a lot of cool stuff I'm gonna we're gonna end up seeing there um, but the one problem I have with Superman on the show, Superman, it's not, it's not a political, political thing. It's Superman is easily more powerful than Supergirl because Superman has been on earth a lot longer, had more sun exposure. He's more talented. He's, he's had more practice, but it, Supergirl has a one V one, uh, when Superman's roided out like in rage and she kicks his ass so i'm not really happy with this superman per se because i feel like it was just he was just used to make her look good that's my just my opinion i mean eventually eventually supergirl does end up like outmatching superman on multiple occasions but this was season two of supergirl so she's supposed to be like inexperienced and stuff like that i'm getting on a tangent but so i'm not a huge fan of what they've done with superman so far but the fact of the matter is that they have to have Supergirl, arrow, two arrows, two flashes, I think a third, because if you count OG Flash, and then, like, I think that's dope as shit. All the fight Superman. I think that's going to be a really cool-ass fight. See, if he loses, I'm cool, because it, t- it took multiple heroes to stop him. I'm really excited to see that, and I'm also excited to see Batgirl, oh, not Batgirl, Batwoman, and uh, I'm excited to see where things go from there. So what's next on the thing? Okay, so we got um, technically two different stories, but they're also really one. So the Aquaman reviews have c- come out, and they're not what I was expecting, to say the least. They are really, really, really positive. 
Uh, let me pull up some of the reviews really quick on the computer. This is why I needed to uh, get my glasses going. Uh, let me close that notification really quick. Uh, seeing all photos. I would like to see all photos. That would be nice. Oh, God. This computer is a piece of dumpster fire, dude. Poggers. Oh, God. Uh, let me just close that out. Uh, now it's gone. Whatever. <laughs> it's tough shit. Um... Because my computer won't cooperate, but okay. So this is why I got a uh, what they basically said. In a nutshell, they said that um, hey, Aquaman's world building is astounding. They said uh, the weakest review. This is the weakest review I saw on it. Basically saying that hey, the first act didn't work for me. It was kind of sloppy here and there. But he said overall, it was a fun time. Fun time. And these are not the people that raved about BBS. These are not the people that raved about Justice League. These people hated those movies. I mean, these are critics like The Hollywood Reporter. like So the people that you, we should really trust saying that it was just a fun movie with great world building. And that's all I really wanted to see. It's just a fun movie with great world building. Because, I mean, Atlantis, I mean, that's a huge untapped like source, if you will, that we have not really seen too much in recent years. Especially... In Aquaman, we, we this is our first live action Aquaman movie, so world building is pretty important in this movie, and I'm glad they got that down. They said the visuals are gorgeous. They didn't say it was on par with Avatar, but they, it, one re reviewer said it reminded them of Avatar and that beautiful aspect and just the colors and stuff like that. So overall, Aquaman's getting good, like a lot of good hype. And a couple months ago, the uh, opening weekend numbers were tracking at fifty million dollars. Which is pretty low. It's also because of the whole death trap that is the that eight eight day window. I mean, you got Mary Poppins, Bumblebee, Sp and Spider Man into the Spider Verse, which we'll be talking about a little bit later, and like a lot of other films opening that eight day window. Uh, you got Sherlock uh, and Watson uh, movie, which personally I don't think is looks that good. But yet again, there's just so much shit going in there. So it was originally at fifty, which made sense to me. And then they bumped up to like sixty. Now, with these uh, reviews out, they bumped it up to $100 million. And um, that means that Justice League will still stand at the only movie that hasn't cracked $100 million on its opening weekend, which is kind of tough when Aquaman beats you out, Justice League. Yikes. But uh, some people are even saying it might even go over that and actually beat Wonder Woman, which is crazy. I thought Wonder Woman made more on its opening weekend, but, I mean, it had amazing legs. It, like, it had... Great standout time, and it ended up making like a, like over seven hundred million dollars, like close to eight hundred, I think. I think it made a little over eight hundred million actually. Now that I think about it, but so some people are saying that could actually beat Wonder Woman, which is incredible, especially with its original tracking numbers not being so good. Uh, then we got into the Spider Verse. At first, I was against the idea when I heard they're making an animated Spider Man movie. I'm like, why? That's kind of dumb, but. I saw the first trailer. I was like, not bad. I mean, we're going to see Miles Morales on the big screen. Not bad. Um, but still kind of iffy. It took me a, a minute or two to really warm up to the animation style. Now, it's unique enough and it's its own style where I can end up loving it. So, it's just it takes a little bit longer to love it because it's so new. And you got to give them props on that. But getting sidetracked yet again. Uh Early screening came out, uh, I think, like a day ago, and now it's currently sitting at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. They were so confident in this movie, 100%. If the fact that they let the reviewers like send them out, like yes, with Aquaman they have the reviews out, but they're not they're more reactions than anything like that. These are legit reviews, and it's up on Rotten Tomatoes and. That shows confidence, and it's showing not only the fact that they did it this early, 100%. I mean, yes, it's going to eventually drop down probably to like a 92. That's why I'm eventually going to think it's going to stay at 92, 93. I mean, if it stays there, that's incredible. But right now, they're saying it's probably the best superhero film of the year. That's beating out Infinity War. They said one one reviewer. Actually, let me pull up my phone really quick because I, I definitely took screenshots of this. Okay, um... Yeah, I didn't do this on my computer, thank God, because then my computer would have shit the bed, and that would have been tough. Uh, if my phone will cooperate. Uh, wow, dude. This phone's bonkers. There we go. Uh, 
Here we go. So Johnny something, I'm not even, from the New York Post says, it's the best standalone fe- uh, film to feature the iconic iconic character so far. So that's that's got a lot of, uh, of weight to it. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse represents some of the best superhero storytelling on the market. This is the seventh Spider-Man feature film uh, in the past 16 years, but the universe has very rarely felt so fresh. The film's wild, contradictory aesthetic elements of which clash against each other like some kind of dissonant cartoon jazz dazzling explodes the outmanded idea that the superhero movies had to look in a certain way. Um, basically complementing the, the style of animation. A lot of those reviews are over the moon and my expectations went through the freaking roof i'm a huge spider-man fan spider-man is my favorite superhero of all time beats everybody superman batman iron man captain america always and forever spider-man will be my favorite superhero he got me into movies he got me into comics he got me into everything and the fact that i'm gonna get a storyline that i Wanted to see since I was a kid. Gives me chills. I'm getting chills right now. Like, I've always wanted to see a Spider-Man universe with Spider-Ham. Peter Porker. That's amazing. I thought I was going to die never seeing Spider-Ham on screen. It's it's incredible. And we're going to have Nick Cage as Spider-Man Noir. Oh my god, dude. This is just... Incredible. I'm really, really excited. Oh my god. I got a lot of theories I wanted to just spew out, but I'm that's not the point of the, the topic at hand. But like I'm just really excited and now Spider uh, Sony knows they're gonna have a winner on their hands. So with the success of Venom, which is something not on the docket, but like right now it's a beat Justice League and I might even top Wonder Woman, which is insane to think about. Uh with the success of that and the raving success with uh with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse I think that Sony's going to keep Spider-Man in the MCU cuz they got Venom and then they got their animated stuff. That makes me really really happy and it like I feel like they're going to reenact their contracts. They don't need them. They don't need them now. It's not like they're desperate. Venom didn't bomb. This movie's not bombing when it comes to the critics. I'm really excited. I'm just going to say that right now. I, I feel like we're going to have a good next couple years with the MCU and with Sony. I'm really excited. Okay. Now, the next topic at hand is uh, where is the Avengers 4 trailer? Oh, give me a second. Let me give me a giant-ass water bottle over here. Okay. So, I thought, personally, I thought they were going to release it around... Thanksgiving, when they dropped a Lion King trailer, or Black Friday. None of those hit, obviously. Now, I know for a fact it's not going to be when Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse comes out. For one reason. They're planning on dropping the uh, Spider-Man Far From Home trailer then. Um, You can't wait to drop a Spider-Man Far From Home trailer after Avengers because that gives you two months to market. I think this is just going to be a teaser trailer. For Spider-Man Far From Home. And it's not going to show you a lot. But I think it's going to hold us off. Until like Avengers 4 comes out. Um, but I'm pretty sure Marvel kind of confirmed that already. That it's going to be like around there. Or some reports said that. So if I had to guess. When a Avengers 4 trailer is going to drop. Because they did say. There is going to be a trailer. So for you people who are saying. That they're not going to drop a trailer. Shut up please. They're going to drop a trailer. Because last time I checked, you didn't get a degree in um, business and you're not sitting on a multi-trillion dollar company right now. It's not really trillions worth of dollars, but like it's like a multi-billion dollar company that's on top of the world. I'm going to take what they say over what you say. They said that um, there was a guy who said, like, listen, you, you can't trick me in telling you when the trailer is going to come out. I want to tell you, but I can't. But I'll tell you, one is coming. Just be patient. So there is a trailer coming. So I'm going to assume probably around December 5th, before that shitstorm of trailers come out. Uh, not trailers, of shitstorm of movies. So I think it's going to uh, 
get everybody hyped up for the MCU, and it's gonna um kind of boost some market for uh, Spider-Man, even though that's not in the MCU. It's still like when people think Spider-Man now, they think the MCU. So when they see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, they're like, oh, I saw the Avengers Four trailer. And they're gonna go there, and then they're gonna see, boom, Spider-Man and Far From Home, and it's just gonna bump up a lot of hype. So that's my theory. It's gonna probably be around December fifth. If it's, a, I don't see it any later. Because I do see it before the end of the year. I think Marvel even said we're going to have one before the end of the year. I remember seeing a report on that. So, December 5th, that's my theory. Around that date, at least. Um, and I think they're going to end up revealing the title around there, too. I mean, before the trailer, I think they're going to reveal the title. Then they're going to reveal the trailer. And then, after uh, Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse, they're going to uh, release the uh, poster. Or... They released the poster first, then the title, then the trailer. Who knows? But that's why I think I think it's coming soon, guys. I think we just got to wait another week, maybe two weeks, which is crazy. If it drops on December 5th, that's the day before uh, my uh, four-year anniversary on YouTube. So, I mean, that will be a pretty good present. Now, uh, final topic of the day, then we're going to get into the question uh, that someone asked. Uh, by the way, guys, you can ask questions. Just hit me up on my Twitter, Instagram, whatever. If you have any form of contact on my um, social media, shoot me a message saying like, hey, I got a question for your podcast next week. And then boom, shoot me a message and I'll definitely get to it. That being said, um, we got to talk about this Birds of Prey thing. You guys know what Birds of Prey is? Well, let me fill you in. It's basically an all-female DC uh, movie. Uh, Normally, I would not be against the idea. But I'm just going to get sidetracked really here uh, really quick. I'm not against the idea of an all-female superhero show or movie, but my problem with this is it's Batwoman, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Huntress. Now, if you guys don't know, Harley Quinn is basically a nut job. She's basically Joker, but in female form. Basically, not not 100%, but basically. You got her, nut job supervillain, Huntress. Basically Green Arrow, but kills people. Anti-hero. Poison Ivy. She's got a thing for plants. Super villain. Batgirl. Superhero. They do not belong on the same screen teaming up. They didn't say officially confirmed that they will be teaming up, but they confirmed that the main villain is going to be Black Mask starring Ewan McGregor, which I'm pretty excited to see. But... So that leads me to believe that they're going to team up. That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. An anti-hero teaming up with a psychopath, teaming up with a plant lover, teaming up with a superhero. It makes absolutely no sense. You could not be farther reaching a team up more than anything. I get it. It's this new trend. Like, Well, it's not really a trend per se, but... um, it's this new thing that they want to like have all female cast in one movie, which is fine. I didn't hate Ghostbusters 2016 because of the whole all female cast. I didn't fucking spit on it because of the whole female cast. I didn't really enjoy the movie that much because the movie was not that good. I I laughed, I smiled once or twice, but that's it. But it's not because of the female cast. I was all up for it. I was like, oh whatever, new storytelling. This geek. Female characters that make sense together. It's not that hard. Yeah, you want to have Harley Quinn because this whole new Harley Quinn thing that people love all of a sudden. But find someone that is actually makes sense. Huntress and Harley Quinn ain't too far-fetched. It's not too far-fetched. It's a bit of a reach, but it's not too far-fetched. Harley Quinn and teaming up with Poison Ivy... Not too far-fetched because they're both villains and they're both a little crazy. But the moment you have Batgirl teaming up with Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and an anti-hero, basically she's teaming up with three people that do not agree with her and her ideals. It makes no sense, but that's beside the point. That's beside the point. I'm getting way sidetracked. The title has been confirmed and fucking Christ, it's so stupid. It's so dumb. It's called Birds of Prey... And the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Like, I get what they're going for. But it's literally the stupidest title you could 
ever put out. So dumb. It's ridiculous, but I don't have too much to say on that, but, like, like I see they're going for, like, it's a Harley Quinn-based movie, but no. No. Like, if you want to show that how crazy she is, don't put that shit in the title. Whatever. Not too much to go on that. Now, uh, for the question of the day. Let me get my phone out really quick. I remember it, but I don't want to paraphrase it here. Uh, be a little respectful to the person who asked me the question. Okay. This is from my Discord. So, um, like I said, just hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Go with my latest post or just tweet me and just comment asking the question. Okay. So, this is Wazi. Her question is, lately films have been um, become simply remakes. Is this the end of original ideas? Now, I was supposed to do some prep on this uh, question really quick, but I didn't get the chance. But the problem with that is it's fine that you think that. Let me take another drink of water really quick. It's fine to think that, but the problem is Hollywood is a big business. It's a, it's a business. They go where the money leads. That's why superheroes are a big thing right now. The problem is with the original ideas is they are made. And no one goes to see them. I'll ask this question and I'll bet you only 20% have actually seen this movie. Kubo into Two Strings. Original idea. Barely. I actually lost the studio money. And they asked. They were asked. Are you going to stop making original ideas and uh, expensive stop motion an, uh, animation films? They said, no. We're going to continue doing it. And I give them a lot of props for that because that was an expensive ass movie to make. For stop motion, I think it was like the budget was like $70, $80 million. It was, it was pretty pricey. And I think that movie only made like. Actually, let me look up the box office for that really quick because that's actually something I'm really interested in. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Kubo and the two strings. Uh, box office. Here we go. Wow. So the budget was $60 million. And, wow, that's really bad. Uh, yeah, I'm going to drop that 20% of you watched it to 2% watched it. I thought I made more than that. It only made $77.5 million. 100% original idea. I love the movie. It is such a heartwarming movie. It was my favorite movie of that year. And um, it, it's, a, it's a shame because like people like you say, is this the end of original ideas? But then you got shit like that. Like, that's going to be my biggest argument is the fact that no one watches these films. And um, when they are made, people don't go to see them. I remember 2016 and 2017, this was the biggest discussion of that time. Is this the end of original ideas? But the problem is no one goes out and supports them. I mean, so that tells Hollywood, you guys don't care about uh, original ideas. You guys care about remakes, reboots, superhero movies. And I get it. It's fine because some people can't afford to go to a movie that often, and it's, it's movie tickets are pretty expensive. So if I were, to, if I only had fifteen bucks and I can only see one movie a year, a year I'm going to watch Avengers four over any other anything else because I know I'm going to have a blast watching that. And it sucks for me because I know Spider Man Far From Home is coming out that year. But like, so I can't blame everybody, but um, for the people that constantly bitched and moaned about like original content the problem with that is they are the same people who did not see kubo and the two strings they are the same people who didn't watch tomorrowland tomorrowland yes based off a roller coaster but the entire story and the entire script is a hundred percent original that that lost disney money so is it the end of original ideas no there's always going to be a studio that has the balls to make original content but the question is are they ever going to make money and i don't think so I think there, there's going to be one or two hits here and there. And then people are going to act like they're film fanatics because they watched an original movie. But there's still like at least 40, 50 movies a year that get released. That sounds like a lot. There's like hundreds and hundreds of movies that get released a year. And at least 40 or 50 of them are original ideas and no one watches them. I think Black Klansman, 
I think that was based off a book, actually. Um, sorry to bother you. I think that's an original idea. I'm not too sure. Like I said, I, I should have done research for, for this. But like my biggest thing was Kubo into two strings. I knew they lo they lost money. Budget sixty million. They made seventy seven million. You think oh they made money? They made like twelve million dollars. No, they did not. That doesn't include the uh, money that they uh, they sent to the theaters to uh, show their film. And they, it was a, it was a wide release film. So that's like ten million right there. Boom. Marketing. That's like fifty. 60 million boom right there so they lost a lot of money they lost a lot of money and this the studio that makes that isn't exactly a hundred percent like it's not like disney or anything like that so that was a big massive blow so that sucks okay so that is it for my podcast guys so uh before you uh click off this video if you guys are still here thank you for watching uh tomorrow i am releasing my wtf series review and it will be of the movie called teeth it's not exactly a bad movie per se. Like I didn't watch it yet. I'm gonna I'm actually about to watch it after the show because it's got 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. But it's a different WTF kind of movie. It's like the plot. If you guys don't know what Teeth is, just look it up because it's 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 weird. It's gonna get spicy. It was a request, so we'll see how things go. Well, thank you guys for staying with the show. Thank you so much. I want to. I'm gonna keep on doing these every Thursday. Uh, they're going to probably be out around 8 o'clock, um, so we'll do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a Twitter, Instagram, Gumps underscore videos. Go follow me there for the latest news and updates on my channel, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all the crap. Later, and goodbye.